You're listening to KPFT, 90.1 on the dial, Pacifica Network Station. If you're down in Galveston, pick us up at 89.5. And our friends up in the Piney Woods of East Texas, 91.9. It is time for Songwriter's Studio. I'm your host, Tom Tranchilla, along with Lloyd Daniel, our engineer, doing what he does best every week. Turning the knobs and doing all the editing. Thank you, Lloyd, for all you do. It is our great pleasure to bring in this afternoon on Songwriter Studio, The Limelighters. How you guys doing? Hello there, Tom. We're doing great. <laughs> How, howdy, Tom. We have on the line Andy Corwin and Dan Bowling, two of the current three members of The Limelighters. And uh, saw you both mm-hmm. at the Kerrville Music Festival uh, playing various here playing there uh solo and as the group oh yeah and as usual polished as can be andy you are the longest survivor of, of the current lineup of the limelighters yes you've got a long history mm-hmm. and uh before we get into that and it could be time consuming because they've had so many member changes over what uh 60 some years now since they originally 62 62 years as a group how about that that's fantastic. Anyway, uh, we are going to get into the history of the group and the current and uh, talk about all that. But before we do that, let's go ahead and start out the opening track off the brand new album, The Cutting Edge of Passé, which brings in old, traditional folk music, original limelighter compositions, as well as original compositions from the current members, Andy Corwin, Steve Brooks, Dan Bowling, and all these tracks are great, and they bring in not only the original traditional sound of the Limelighters, but as a contemporary update, and uh, you guys did a stellar job of recording and and keeping with the tradition of the band. One one of you has introduced the uh, folk medley here, which tracks we're about to listen to. Well, this was a medley of songs that dates back to probably the late 80s or early 90s. Lou Gottlieb who was the original leader of the band, the man who played the bass, and uh, whose job I have nowadays. Lou was the musical arranger, vocal arranger, and this was uh, his arrangement of these three songs. It begins with a kind of a mashup of uh, Woody Guthrie's song, Hard Traveling, along with Spiritual Mount Zion. It segues into a traditional folk song, Wayfaring Stranger, and then it closes with a rouser. It's a rousing version of Lee Hayes's Lonesome Traveler. It's our opening folk medley. It's a perfect track to open this album with. Very traditional folk. Off the brand new album, The Limelighters, The Cutting Edge of Passé. I love the title of the record, by the way, Andy. Thank you. Uh, this is Folk Medley. Gentlemen, start your engines. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Some hard traveling, I'd love to know. I've been doing some hard traveling way down the road. I've been doing some hard traveling, hard rambling, hard gambling. I've been doing some hard traveling, Lord. On my journey now to Mount Zion, on my journey now to Mount Zion, on my journey now, I'm a journey now, on my journey now, I'm a journey now, my journey Zion, I'm a journey now, I'm a journey now, Mount Zion. I've been hitting that Lincoln Highway, I thought you know. I've been hitting that 66, way down the road. Heavy load and a worried mind, looking for a woman that's hard to find. I've been doing some hard traveling, Lord. On my journey now to Mount Zion, 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 my time is near, the road is hard and the way is long, I have no fear. On my journey now to Mount Zion, where the lamb lies down with the lion, I've been doing some hard traveling more. I've been doing some hard traveling, I thought you know. I've been doing some hard traveling, way down the road. 
I've been doing some hard rambling. I've been doing some hard gambling. I've been doing some hard traveling. Lord. I am a poor wayfaring stranger. Traveling through this world of woe But there's no sickness, no toil or danger In that bright land to which I go I'm going there my father I'm going there No more to roam I'm going there Just over Jordan I'm going there To my new home One of these mornings
hard traveling. Yeah. Mount Zion. <laughs> Wayfair and Stranger. Lonesome Traveler. Folk Medley, the opening track off the brand new Lime Lighters mm-hmm. album. The cutting edge. I'm plumb tuckered out just listening to it. <laughs> you should have seen us up in here in the studio jumping up and down. <laughs> if you're just tuning yep, in. That was, go ahead. That was a one take. Andy Corwin. Yeah, we did do it in one take, didn't we? We sure did. Andy Corwin and Dan Bowling are our guests. The lime, two of the three limelighters. We are missing mm-hmm. Steve Brooks. If you're listening, Steve, you're in our heart, thoughts, and prayers over here at the uh, Songbrush Studios. We've got numerous tracks picked out. We're going to play off the new record. Stellar job on this. I'm assuming in my hand is the hard copy. You'll be selling these at the upcoming dates in hard copy form as well, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. you bet. We would be delighted to do that. Mm-hmm. I talked a little bit about, before we played the opening track, Andy, could you go through the history of the member changes since its inception in 1959? Well, I mentioned Lou Gottlieb earlier, who was essentially the leader of the group. The band started because Lou Gottlieb was a vocal arranger and had um, some arrangements that he'd created that he wanted to pitch to the Kingston Trio. And he, at the time, was hanging around in New York, Greenwich Village coffee houses, and he met two young guys, Alex Hasselev and Glenn Yarbrough. And he recruited them to come in the studio and sing these demos that he was trying to pitch to the Kingston Trio at the time. Because at the time, the Kingston Trio were all that and then some. They were the biggest selling pop group at the time in 1959, 60. So Alex recruited... I mean, uh, Lou recru- recruited Alex and Glenn. They went in the studio. I think it was successful. I think the Kingston Trio actually did purchase some of his uh, arrangements. And then a month or two later, Lou had some more stuff to record. And they went in the studio and recorded it. And they decided they liked the way they sounded better than the way than the Kingston Trio singing the same songs. <laughs> Lou had uh, connections in San Francisco. And he got them a booking at the uh, Hungry Eye, which is a very big club at the time in San Francisco. The Limelighters opened there in January of 1960. Uh, they got great reviews. There were lines around the block the next night. And the following week, they got three record offers, the record deals. Oh, so gracious. <laughs> they were off and running very, very quickly. Lou... Alex and Glenn, and of course, uh, of the three, Glenn Yarbrough is probably the best known because he went on to have a, a very uh, big solo career after he left the Limelighters in 1963. Lou and Alex kept the band together and uh, replaced Glenn, and there were various people over the years that have been in the band. Daniel, didn't we count it up? How many people have been in the Limelighters? I'm the 13th. Years? 13. 13th. <laughs> lucky number 13. I'm, I'm the newest, so I'm lucky 13, yeah. That's right. And actually, most of the credit goes to Alex Hasselev, who is the less surviving member of the original trio. And he's going to be 90 years old in just a few weeks, on July 11th. Yeah, so I noted. when Alex, Alex had uh, oh, about 50 years, he had kept the band together when he hired me in uh, 2004. He actually offered me the position in the 90s, in 1996, when Lou Gottlieb passed away. And I was committed to another band at that time, and I turned him down. But eight years later, he came and offered me the job again. And so, gosh, now it's been... Somebody do the math real fast. 18 years. 18 years. And going strong. Andy, you've kept it going, and you brought in Steve Brooks, then Dan Bowling, and the uh, harmonies are stellar, especially in the live shows uh, i really appreciate uh, how tight the group is and uh you, you're just so well rehearsed just uh my well, and also, if i could just interject one thing tom it's that i recruited steve to join the band in the 2018 when we had a, a turnover and uh and then in 2019 the fellow who was the uh the tenor in the limelighters left to join the kingston trio so created a spot and but I knew Steve and Daniel I had known for several years from the Kerrville Folk Festival. We're, we're sort of Kerbert brothers from the festival. And I think that has a lot to do with why the, the chemistry just works so well. 
right now. And so, well, uh, Dan, how does it feel to be replacing the guy that went to the Kingston Trio? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it actually works out really well because uh, it means that there's a, a lovely brotherhood now between the Limelighters and the current Kingston Trio, and we're doing a lot of shows together, which uh, really works out super well for us, the Kingston yeah, Trio sure. being, being better known than we are. Um, and and the audience gets more bang for their buck because a lot of times they not only get the Kingston Trio, but the Limelighters and the Brothers Four. Yep. Uh, we perform together a bunch, and, and I'm having a heck of a good time. Yes, you are. Speaking of yeah. so good a time, there you've cut several of your original tunes. One we have queued up right now, Dad's Garage. I love the lyrics in this song, just cut me up. Why don't you uh, give the listening audience a little bit a uh, heads up on this track? Sure. Uh, uh, Mama died clear back in 2000, but Daddy, uh, Daddy uh, was doing fine for quite a few years living in their little house in Aztec, New Mexico. But he developed Parkinson's, and he, he got to the point rather quickly where he couldn't maintain on his own anymore. And so the plan B was to go live with my sister and her husband over in rural Brown County, Indiana, outside of Bloomington, where my sister's on the faculty at Indiana University. But what that meant was we had to get together all the adults in the family over one Christmas vacation and really quickly take apart my father's house in Aztec there and piece out all the family furniture and stuff, uh, the things that were going to go to Indiana for his living space and the things that were going to go to other family members and, you know, taking apart the family house and figuring out what to do with all that stuff. I think most people of our generation have had to do that at least once. And this song kind of tells the story of how it went for our family. Off the brand new album, The Limelighters, The Cutting Edge of Passe, this is Dad's Garage. Sleeves rolled up Work gloves on, a dust mask on my face It's time to sort and pack and load And ship my papa's place Chunks of chain, hunks of board A couple dozen scriptures of the Lord Things we can't, things we must Under forty years of dust Chest waders with the feet cut off Hanging on the wall of my dad's garage I don't know what he kept them for But I'm pretty sure he never wore those Chest waders with the feet cut off Lest maybe he lost his mind But when somebody goes through things of mine No telling just what they'll find Shaped toilet paper holder really reeks of class. This Victorian era servant tray with them moss under glass. What to keep, what to throw, who the heck is ever gonna know? What we pitch, what we say, take that secret to my grave. With these pliers, I'll keep them for sure. And this pistol, mama's, mama's, daddy carried in the war. What to do with all of this stuff? Every house already has enough. Give a bunch of things away. Pity our own kids someday. There's chest waiters with the feet cut off, hanging on the wall of my dad's garage. I don't know what he kept them for, but I'm pretty sure he never wore those chest waders with the feet cut off, lest maybe he lost his mind. But when somebody goes through things of mine, no telling just what they'll find. Cause I've got pay stubs clear back to the 60s. Blue jeans that no longer fit me. Bags of rusty used guitar strings. Projects left undone. 
out from a jack of all trades. Duck that hasn't budged in decades. In my mind, the choir sings. You are your father's son. Dad's garage. <laughs> From the brand new. Oh, it's true, right, Daniel? <laughs> oh, well, that's the thing. You know, as a songwriter, uh, songwriters and other storytellers, we, we never let the facts interfere with the truth. Uh, <laughs> but in, in, the, in the case of this song, I did not have to dip into my uh, imagination one bit. Every single one of those things was in that house. Dan, uh, <laughs> you did remind me that the uh, pay stubs that I've been saving from the late 60s and early 70s in that shoebox <laughs> need to go. Hey, you know, it's a baby boomer trait. <laughs> if you're just tuning in, we have the Limelighters, our guest on Songwriter Studio, Andy Cohen and Dan Bowling. Great new album, The Cutting Edge of Passe. And we have got the title track queued up next, The Cutting Edge of Passe. Andy, this is your penned uh, piece. Yeah. Why don't you uh, let the folks... Well, I love the lyrics well, to this song. Go ahead, take before it. Before we go there, just indulge me for a second time because I just want to little backstory on dad's garage, which is that during the pandemic, Steve and I are in Austin, Texas, Daniel's in New Mexico. We really couldn't get together for almost two years. But what we could do is uh, remotely, separately, individually film ourselves and then put it all together and make music videos. And we decided to make a music video of dad's garage which is on uh, YouTube. People want to look it up, and it really, I'm very proud of it. <laughs> Daniel's sister is a wonderful artist, and she created this wonderful uh, pen and ink drawing of Dad's garage. <laughs> and then using green screen, uh, the three of us, I was able to put us in the cartoon. That is and, fantastic. Uh, I got to check song. it out. So please, yeah, check it out. It's on. You can find it on our, uh, there's a link to it on our website, which is, www.limelighters.com and uh, on our YouTube channel. Featuring artwork by Elizabeth Bowling. That's a right. I, meant, I was, I was gonna, about to say that. I'll Thank check it out myself. <laughs> Andy. Uh, um, okay. Thank you for uh, letting me digress there oh, for a I'm second. Oh, I'm glad you, you did. Andy, Go ahead. The Cutting Edge of Passe was actually a song I wrote for the Limelighters back when Alex was still performing. There was a three-year period where I overlapped with Alex Hasselev from the original trio. And uh, the song really just grew out of the uh, notion of having him sing the first line of the song. Just, <laughs> to me, just I just thought that would be hysterically funny. I think we can all, especially people in our age group, can relate to this entire, the lyrics of this song. This is great. Let's listen to this track right now. The title track from the brand new Limelighters album, The Cutting Edge of Passe. I don't have a single pierced body part. I don't have any tattoos. I'm out of step with everything that's state of the art, but I'm not singing the blues. Now you might call it old fashioned, but I don't see it that way I'd prefer to think of it as the cutting edge of passé I'm no fan of computers, cell phones or fax machines Don't talk to me about HTML, I don't even know what that means Fully technologically challenged, but spare me your display. Cause we're content to live out here on the cutting edge of passe. We're on the cutting edge of passe. Keeping the modern world at bay. Blazing a trail to yesterday. Hey, what more can we say? say, say cliche and what's more we like it that way and we intend to stay on the cutting edge of passe I still believe that folks 
folk songs can be a force for good inspiring the masses to seek peace and brotherhood peace and brotherhood now you might choose to accuse us of naivete but we're prepared to take a stand on the cutting edge of passe the cutting edge of passe Title track from the Limelighters' brand new album, The Cutting Edge of Passe. Great lyrics, great harmonies. My compliments. Two thumbs up, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, I was uh, listening to the next track we've got queued up here, As Young As Your Kiss. This is a Dan Bowling composition. You've gone to a waltz with this, Dan. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, actually, this song's been around a little while. It's one of the songs that I entered into the new folk songwriter competition at the Kerrville Folk Festival back in 2014. It got me into the finals and it uh, got me into the winner's circle. So uh, this song uh, means a lot to me, but uh, specifically the song is a a love song for folks like myself and Ellen who are coming up on our 39th anniversary who may no longer be technically young, but we're still very much in love. And a new grandfather, I might want to add. Yeah. Exactly. In, in fact, uh, there's there's a line in this song about uh, grandchildren, and uh, we didn't have any when I wrote the song, but we do now. Congratulations on that, you too, Alan. Let's listen to this song off the brand new Limelighters album, The Cutting Edge of Passe, As Young As Your Kiss. <laughs> years go so quickly, my love, how did we get to be gray? Decades go by in the blink of an eye, it still feels like just yesterday. The first time that I heard you say, love me forever and hold me right now. Gather our memories like this I know we'll never be old anyhow Anytime we reminisce I'll be as young as your kiss just children when we fell in love and we're still as happy today the circle keeps turning around like it does our children have children these days i love watching you watching them play love me forever and hold me right now Gather our memories like this I know we'll never be old anyhow Anytime we reminisce I'll be as young as your kids Now we're both better rounded in so many ways We don't move Quite as fast anymore But youth isn't only a question of age You're the same girl I've always adored Love me forever and hold me right now Gather our memories like this I know we'll never be old anyhow Anytime we reminisce, we'll be as young as our very first kiss. Whenever you hold me like this, 
I'll be as young as your kids. As young as your kiss, Dan Bowling composition. Oh, that I'm one so also, by know. the way, Tom, we made a music video of that one as well. Oh, really? Sure They've got two to Google, both on YouTube. They're on YouTube also. I got to mention it's also on Facebook. Limelighters have a Facebook page, and people can find us that way also, and with links to all these videos. If you like what you hear and you miss the show or you want to turn a friend on to what you've heard, we are archived on the kpft.org website. Go there and just scroll down to 5 p.m. on Sundays. You can... Listen to our show up to 14 days, and it is podcasted. If you miss it, go to the YouTube. If you're just tuning in, the Limelighters are our guest on Songwriter Studio, enjoying brand new tracks off the cutting edge of Passe, the new record by the Limelighters. Great stuff. You guys really broke up the tempos, the medleys. You've got all sorts of stuff on here. Just about anybody should enjoy. Go ahead. Well, we were going for variety. We wanted to reflect kind of the the gamut of what we're performing nowadays, which is a mixture of old songs that uh, the Limelighters have been doing for many years with vocal arrangements by Lou Gottlieb and new songs written by Steve, Daniel, and I with vocal arrangements that are modeled on how Lou Gottlieb probably would have (laughs) arranged them. (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly what I noted. We're emulating that model, and it's something that um, we're very motivated to do, to uh, preserve the integrity of the sound, and uh, even if it's new material that we're bringing in. As well as including comedy. Go ahead. And of course, how a lot of the songs that we consider standard Limelighters fare, how a lot of those songs got into the repertoire is as there was turnover in the group, uh, mm-hmm. New members brought songs in with them, so we're continuing that tradition as well. Exactly. Yep. And uh, actually, that brings me up to the next track we've got queued up. Andy, this is an original written by you. You may be a baby boomer if. Baby boomer song. And this is a, this is a little short song that just cracked me up when the first time I heard it. Uh, why don't you give the listening audience a little heads up on this track? Oh, uh, well... Okay, well, the truth be told, I actually wrote the song for uh, a a different music project that I'm involved in. I do a duo act with a wonderful, talented woman named Justine Ward, who lives out in L.A., and we call our act Daddy-O and Angel. We're a couple of baby boomers on the lam. And so this song was actually written for Daddy-O and Angel, and we still perform it, slightly different version, but it was one that the Limelighter audience that was familiar with and it just kind of worked for us. So what I always ask uh, people is uh, for a show of hands, who, who is a baby boomer in the audience? And there's usually a few that are a little hesitant to raise their hands. So then the challenge becomes, well, if you recognize the opening chord of this song, then you might be a baby boomer. <laughs> Well, let's listen to this track right now. You might be a baby boomer if... It's almost a tongue twister. Off the Limelighter's brand new album, The Cutting Edge of Passé. You might be a baby boomer if You went to college when it was affordable And you might be a baby boomer if You owned a lot of records that weren't re-recordable You might be a baby boomer if You grew up watching Captain Kangaroo If you fit the description, don't have a conniption You're a baby boomer through and through You might be a baby boomer if You ever bumped a dime so you could use the pay phones You might be a baby boomer if you remember the opening theme song to the Flintstones You might be a baby boomer if You went to parties where they serve fondue If you match the depiction, it ain't science fiction You're a baby boomer through and through If you remember the Jefferson airplane Reminding you to feed your head Or if you ever rolled a doobie on the cover of Working Man's Dead 
you might be a baby boomer if you ever owned a pet rock, a slinky, or an earth shoe. You might be a baby boomer if you know what M&Ms will do and what they won't do. You might be a baby boomer if you have a counterculture point of view. If the shoe fits, then buy it, you just can't deny it. You're, You're a baby boomer through and through. You're a baby boomer through and through. Aren't you proud to be a boomer? You might be a baby boomer if, and Andy, yeah. I would uh, think that opening chord is a nod to the Beatles. <laughs> Yeah, just a little bit. And, you know, uh, truth be told, you know where I, uh, Jeff Foxworthy does that routine, you might be a redneck if that was kind of what I stole the idea from. <laughs> I believe I've heard that. <laughs> and and uh, if you think that's a tongue twister to say, you ought to try singing it. Yeah. <laughs> In three-part harmony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're just tuning in, the Limelighters are our guest on Songwriter Studio. We're talking to Andy Corwin and Dan Bowling, and uh, certainly enjoying brand new tracks off the new album, The Cutting Edge of Passe. You know, we've uh, got the next track booted up. This is a Steve Brooks tune, excellent harmonies, and I noted a penny whistle in the next song, Mountain. Can one of you expand on this? That would be Daniel Bowling playing his his that first and. First and only Penny Whistle solo. Uh, in, Penny in Whistle Captain debut. <laughs> the Penny Whistle <laughs> debut. Dan, I never knew you played the Penny Whistle. Oh, I'm a man of, of uh, many hidden talents, <laughs> uh, many of which uh, hopefully will always remain so. <laughs> well, one of the reasons I picked this track, it really highlights the uh, importance of the harmonies of the Limelighters and, and their signature, <laughs> the three-part harmonies. and. Great job, Steve, if you're listening on uh, penning this song. Let's listen to this track right now off the brand new album, The Cutting Edge of Passe, The Limelighters, the name of this track, Mountain. There's no telling what this world's gonna hold in store For you to make your way around it I wish you happiness and even a little more May you find yourself a mountain Let there be a roof to shelter you from the sky With four strong walls around it May the ones you love together be standing by And may you find yourself a mountain May you find yourself a mountain Where sides are steep and valleys deep Where an eagle's voice is sounding May you find yourself a mountain May you hold another close as you hold your breath May your love flow like a fountain Forgive your worst and spur you to give your best And may you find yourself a mountain And if the summit stands forever just out of reach May your heart go on a pounding It's about the climb, it isn't about the peak May you find yourself a mountain May you find yourself a mountain Where sides are steep and valleys deep 
Where an eagle's voice is sounded May you find yourself a mountain Find yourself a mountain Mountain Pen yeah. by Steve Brooks. Great song, great harmonies. And that guy well, playing another... that penny whistle, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. But I remember when we were first learning that song and asking ourselves, what would Uncle Lou do? How would Uncle Lou, Lou Gottlieb, how would he arrange this? You know, where would he punctuate it? Where would he build it? And that's a, a really good example, I think. I think we were pretty successful with that one. Now, Andy, I'm assuming, is that yeah. you hitting the very low note on the very end of the song? That would be me. That was a hard note to hit. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, my yeah, compliments. Well, thank you. I've thank made you. a special note on this next track we've got queued up. It's a parody, Charlie and the TSA. Oh, and yeah. This is a great <laughs> song. I think you worked with Steve on this song. Why don't you expand a little bit on this? This is a great time. I remember vividly one Sunday afternoon, I had gone over to Steve's for uh, cribbage and mint juleps, I think it was. And we were sitting in his backyard with our guitars and we were swapping songs. And that song, the Charlie and the MTA song that the Kingston Trio do, have been doing for years and years and years. We were, uh, we were trying to remember it, I think, as we were playing it. And one thing led to another, and we decided that the song needed an update, that it just did not reflect adequately the existential dilemmas faced by the contemporary traveler. Because <laughs> if you remember, the song's about the guy who gets on the subway in Boston, and he can't get off the subway because he doesn't have a nickel. Yeah, vaguely. <laughs> well, it was uh, it was part of a, a political campaign, I think, in the 1940s. There was somebody running for the mayor of Boston that he had proposed a way of the city would raise money by charging people an extra nickel to get off the train. So somebody wrote that song, making fun of the idea. Well, we decided to make fun of the making fun of the idea. And so we updated it. Instead of Charlie and the MTA, the version that Steve and I wrote is called Charlie and the TSA. Well, if you were looking to update it, you did a bang-up job on it. I love this song. <laughs> the lyrics are very clever. Off the brand new album, The Cutting Edge of Passe, The Limelighters, this is Charlie and the TSA. Let me tell you all a story about a man named Charlie tried to fly out of JFK. He was two hours early, but before he boarded, had to pass through the TSA. As he waited in line, he had a chance to read the sign that told him things he'd better not do. But unbeknownst to Charlie, they changed the regulations. He was carrying too much shampoo. And did he ever return? No, oh, he never returned. And his fate is still unlearned. He's gonna miss the next one He's the man who never returned First they fingerprinted Charlie Then a lie detector Then they pulled his credit score up Ran his license, his passport His high school transcript They made him pee in a cup Then they strip searched Charlie Probed his body cavities And tested his DNA when he asked for his lawyer, they said, Sorry, Charlie, you can call from Guantanamo Bay. And did he ever return? No, he never returned. And his fate is still unlearned. Now they're holding him in indefinite detention. He's the man who never returned. Citizens who fly better heed this fable The morals very plain Next time you travel, remember poor Charlie It's faster to take the train 
For you may never return, you may never return That's the lesson Charlie learned Now they're moving him to an undisclosed location He's the man who never returned But you can see his face Upon an old milk carton He's a man who never returns Andy Corwin, Steve <laughs> Brooks penned Charlie and the TSA. What a great song. The lyrics, uh, I know that wasn't easy to make all that work, but you guys did a stellar job. <laughs> well, we had a lot of fun doing it. The original, uh, the MTA, was written by uh, Jacqueline Steiner and Bess Lomax back in 1949. Oh, this was a Lomax. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. You know, the Kingston Trio are fond of pointing out the lyric of that song, of the original Charlie song, has his wife meets him at the station and hands him a sandwich through the window as the train goes rumbling through. And nobody ever asks, why didn't you just give him a nickel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've always wondered. Because it's a folk song, that's why. <laughs> Doesn't have to make sense, it's a folk song. If you're just tuning in or catching the end of the show, we are nearing the end of the show. Andy Corwin, Dan Bowling, our guests from the Limelighters, The Cutting Edge of Passe, the brand new album. We're going to try to squeeze two more tracks in, guys. Before we do that, let's talk about contact information. You have a website with your schedule up to date, possibly merchandise to purchase. Why don't you uh, let the listening audience in on that? www.limelighters.com. And we spell Limelighters without a G-H in the middle. So it's just L-I-M-E-L-I-T-E-R-S dot com. Very good. Nice and simple. You can find us on Facebook also and uh, Instagram. We don't tweet. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> no tweeting. Because <laughs> we're and, on uh, the cutting edge of passe. That's man. right. That's right. <laughs> Before we get away, Tom, I want to be sure and, and shout out to my co-producer on this, the great John O. Manson. Oh, yes, King John O. Uh, the Kitchen Sink is the wonderful recording studio in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where we recorded the studio tracks for this album. And then uh, the live tracks, we recorded them at the Trivia Arts Center with the able assistance of Dan Phil Green and Rhett Jarrett there and took those live tracks back into the kitchen sink and John O. Manson uh, mixed and mastered those as well as our studio tracks. So uh, we sure appreciate his wonderful artistry added to our album. Yes, he's the wizard that made it all wonderful. Thank you for bringing that up. I noted that on the uh, back of the credits on the new album. So thank you for bringing that up. Gentlemen, we've got the 40-year waltz queued up right now. And this is an original Limelighter track. Andy, why don't you let the listening audience know a little bit about this? Real briefly, it was written by a fellow who, at the time when he wrote it, was Lou Gottlieb's son-in-law. It was written for the Limelighters, probably sometime in the 1970s, although I'm not sure of the exact year. But it's been in the repertoire for as long as I've been in the band, so I consider it one of the oldies. Keep the right. tradition. Alan Spector is the man in question, and uh, then Lou Gottlieb and Alex Hasselhoff uh, did a little bit of uh, made a, made a few changes to Alan's original song, and this is yeah. the result. Let's listen to this track right now: the Forty Year Waltz off the brand new Limelighter album, "The Cutting Edge of Passe." Here's our take on the midlife crisis: a song entitled simply "The Forty Year Old Waltz." Oh, one, two, three, two, two, three. My birthday was on Saturday, and much to my surprise, they threw me a big party and it lasted till sunrise. But as my friends began to leave, it was plain to see. Although they smiled and shook my hand, here's what they thought of me. He's 40, he's 40, he's halfway through the dance. Smiles at women half his age as if there's still a chance. Might as well face the music, his rock 
rock and roll days are through. And now the 40-year-old waltz is all that he can do. Tell him, Steve. My friends came back to celebrate just like 10 years ago. They smiled and said, you're looking great. But little do they know, my joints all pay me when it rains. My vision's not as bright. And nature called more frequently in the middle of the night. Oh, Steve. He's 50, he's 50, still moving through the dance. Now the young girls pass him by without a second glance. Might as well face the music, his rock and roll days are through. And now the 50-year-old waltz is all that he can do. Tell him, Andy, that is, as much as you can still remember. I fight the battle of the bulge, but I can't seem to win. And self-destructing body parts are trying to do me in. But good old Kenny Rogers, he showed us what to do. A little liposuction, and I'll be as good as me. He's 60, he's 60, still dreaming of romance. A knight in rusty armor with a slightly drooping lance. Might as well face the music, his rock and roll days are through. And now the 60 year old waltz is what he loves to do. So we're gonna keep on dancing. As long as we're able to And when you're too old to rock and roll We'll play a waltz for you We did it! I knew we could. The 40-year-old waltz, or is it the 50-year-old, or the 60-year-old waltz? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, our guest. We want to thank our guest, well, Andy Corwin, you. Dan Bowling, the Limelighters, spending an hour with us here on Songwriter Studio. We're just about out of time, guys. I would like to remind the listening audience to uh, get out. Main Street Crossing is bringing Steve Earle and the Dukes in uh, June 28th and 29th. Stick around. Up next, we have Ira Shares, followed by Bluegrass Depot. So give these folks one more time your contact information, website, and then we're going to go out with the classic America and This Land is Your Land to, oh, okay. to close the show out. Uh, one more time, contact information. Tom, thanks so much for having us. The website is www.limelighters.com. Limelighters on Facebook, however you find people on Facebook. Am I leaving anything out? I think you got it covered. Tom, yeah. thanks so much for having us on. You're quite welcome. It's always a thanks pleasure. Thanks so much. And uh, get out. Check that schedule. See when they're coming through Houston and uh, go out and see them. I've seen their live show. It is excellent. You will not be disappointed. Stick around, like I said, and a reminder that KPFT will be moving into their new building here in the next few months. So don't forget to give us some support. Dial 713-526-5738. Hit that tip jar. Throw some money towards Songwriter Studio. So until next week, Tom Tranchilla and Lloyd Daniel saying goodbye. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties, Above the fruited plain America, America God shed his grace on thee And crown thy good with brotherhood From sea to shining sea as I was walking that ribbon of highway, I saw above me 
That endless skyway I saw below me That golden valley I said this land was made for you and me Sing it with us, won't you? This land is your land This land is my land From California to the New York Island From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters This land was made for you and me Well, I roamed and rambled And I followed my footsteps To the sparkling sands of her diamond desert And all around me a voice came sounding Said this land was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land From California to the New York Island From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters This land was made for you and me The sun was shining and I was strolling And the wheat was raining and the dust cloud rolling As the fog was lifting A voice was sounding And this land was made for you and me Here we go! This land is your land This land is my land From California To the New York Island From the Redwood Forest To the Gulf Stream waters This land was made for you and me this land is your this land, land is your this land. land is my this land, land is my from California, from California to, the to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest the Redwood to the Gulf Stream waters. waters. This land was made for you and me. This land was made for you and me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you for being here.